What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Off the Record. I'm your host, RJ Starsfit. Glad to be back for another episode here uh, on the show. And I'd like to bring in my great guest who's with me today, Zachary Tingle, Arc Menard Series driver. How you doing, man? Doing great. That's good. That's good. I know you've been on been on the track recently. I know you said you just recently announced you won't be racing at Watkins Glen, unfortunately. But let's look at the season that you've had uh, in general behind the wheel. I mean, how would you recap it? It's been a wild season to say the least. But how how, how mm-hmm. fun is it uh, just just being able to be a driver and be able to race her in the in the Arkham Menard series? I feel like it's gone. Yeah, you know, it's great to be come this far and you know being in the Arkham Menard series and you know starting out. You didn't think you'd. You know, who knew, like, when I started in the indoor go-kart, like, oh, I'd make it all the way to ARCA now. And yeah. so from that perspective, it's been really great. But um, unfortunately, this year, it feels like, you know, there, we've had, we've had like, decent speed some races, but the results haven't, haven't quite come for us. So it's great in some ways, but it's been a little frustrating in others, admittedly. Yeah, I know it's it. Racing is always such a frustrating sport. A lot of people say, and uh, I know for you, I, I, you've had a, a few crazy things happen this season. I want I want to start out with first the the story. Uh, I know I talked to you about uh, the week of of Talladega when you guys were on your way there. I think uh, kind of recap to everybody what happened on your way to the track. Everything you guys had to go through just to get there, because obviously mm-hmm. in racing you have sponsors, you had sponsor obligations you had to do. So kind of just recap what what the heck happened there. Yeah, so we were driving down. We were in Alabama, and we were going by, I think it was, I'm trying to remember what, what it's highway, I forget, and we were headed to Tuscaloosa um, for a sponsor event, and we had a trailer for that we had for Grateful Rescue, and I was sitting back there, and in the back, my, 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 uh, my dad was driving. I was sitting in the back resting and I look back there and I see the wheel. I hear a loud bang and the wheel, the trailers go, the trailers one way and the wheel, the trailers going the other way. So it's, um, like, Oh no, this ain't good. And we managed to get on the side of the road and not crash, but like, Oh, so we had to go find the tire and, find a place to reattach the tire and the whole the whole hub of the wheel came off with the tire so and we ended up sit there to like I want to say about three about 3 a.m when we finally got to a hotel and stayed the night so it was uh, quite eventful and we got up at six the next day and got got to the got to the uh trailer place where we had it fixed and then we appeared there at by 8 a.m so it was quite eventful but it all worked out in the end did, did you guys ever end up making it to the uh the the sponsor show that you guys that you were on your way to you guys yes ended up making it yep awesome. made it at 8 a.m ended up here in that yep so that's good yeah and then obviously the race um uh, on saturday i believe it was how did that go for you on saturday at talladega Talladega, actually, I think that was one of our better races. We just, you know, of course, we knew going in, like, we had us running a legacy motor. We really had no chance of really getting a speed result on speed, and it was going to be mostly attrition. It was just me. Keep, our goal was to be the top legacy motor, and we ended up being the top legacy car in the race, and, you know, I think we got 20th place in the race, which – you know, after starting, I think we started 32nd, we finished, um, we ended up dropping to the back, so we had unapproved adjustments, so we started in the back, and then we finished 20th, so I thought it, it was a good race, so I thought it went really well, just when I really didn't feel like I did much that race, I just stay out of trouble, and we got, yeah. we got 20th, and it, it all, they're all worked out. Exactly, hey, that's what you got to do sometimes, and I remember the weekend mm-hmm. after, uh, at Kansas, I remember the the whole the whole Toby Christie crew we were all in some like audio chat cheering you on as all the chaos went out in Kansas, and you got an 11 place finish. I mean, I know that's awesome for you, not only for you and your team. Just kind of summarize what what a, what a finish like that means for you and your organization. For us, you know, it's like a top 10 is basically like a win for us. So you know, to get 11, we were so close, so, so close on it um, to a top 10 and. For us, I think, I think someone, there's this, 
uh, like someone posted recently and I, I ended up being tagged in. It's like Wayne's team in 772 races has only gotten the top 10 seven times. And so for us, you know, it, it is very rare for us to get a top 10. So for us to get so close to getting one, that's a huge achievement for us. And for a team like us, it's a pretty huge deal. Yeah, exactly. And for, for a lot of people out there that are watching these races, especially when you're on the big, you know, Fox Sports one, uh, when you have a, a worldwide audience, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand the struggles of smaller teams and kind of the different dynamic of teams in the ARCA series. Like obviously eventually, you know, Wayne Peterson, uh, you know, can't be on the same level as Venturini right now. Venturini has a great mm-hmm. program. Um, and there's a lot of things that you guys have to deal with behind the scenes. So like just races like those where, where you can go out there complete all the laps stay out, like we like you were saying about talladega complete all the laps stay out of trouble and bam you come home with a good finish in a clean race car i'm sure that means so much mm-hmm. yeah it, it definitely you know it's what you gotta do sometimes just keep your nose clean and you end up with a good result and sometimes you're you're thrashing you and you don't get a result you want so it's it's uh, it's incredible how racing is so sometimes yeah, exactly. So, so I think you've ra- you've raced in about 11, 11 races this year, right? On the Arca schedule. Yep. So, so how's that been for you? Just, I think it's the most, the most you've raced probably in a season, at least in Arca, uh, as far as the mm-hmm. travel where there were, you know, going into a season where you kind of knew you were going to be competing in some races this year. Did you know it was going to be, um, were there any surprises as far as like the travel and, and getting to races? Has it been a lot or has it been good to kind of been on a schedule where, you know, you're not racing week to week to week? It's well, we've 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 attempted the full. Our initial goal was to run the full season, um, and we had done you know basically for us, we've we traveled before, like we've raced out in California and we've raced down in Florida before. So for us, I'd say the travel part was really not a huge deal for us. I'd say the biggest thing I can note is like um, when we went to Phoenix. And it was like all going through 26 hours driving. We drove down there to Phoenix. And that was my main thing for me. The surprise, like, man, this is a this is a long drive to Phoenix. And it was, but we did, you know, there's a lot of great scenery out west. So I'd say that was probably the most memorable. Yeah. Are are you planning on heading to Phoenix for the end for the end of the year? Uh, not currently, not currently for the end of the season. If an opportunity came up, um, I would definitely consider it, but right now it is not on our schedule. The West coast for sure. I know there's a lot of tracks up in the, um, the middle part of the country that you guys go to a lot of short tracks. I might, I might head to Toledo towards the end of the season for the Arkham Nard series finale. Never really been up there. What is something you would kind of say as, as a guy that's kind of raced in some tracks in that area this season or in the past, like what, what's, what's there to see up there? Just short track racing in general for the Arca series. Well, I'd say for the short tracks, it's definitely different from late model racing, late models. You've got, you know, you, when like when we were late model sportsmen, you'd have quite a wide variety in drivers and driver skill from experience standpoint. But in ARCA, everyone's a lot more serious and a lot, you know, a lot of people they race a lot better. That's my main thing with like ARCA. And for um that to a late model, it you know, they drive a lot different because an ARCA car's eight hundred pounds heavier. So you've got to, especially noticeable on a short track, you've got to work physically a lot harder to get the car around the racetrack and the tires there they go away a lot quicker so you really i would say tire management is a lot more key especially at a short track in an arca car versus say a late mop yeah for sure yeah it's very different and when you talk about short tracks and then translating over some of the bigger time you've raced daytona and talladega this year how, how different is that? How surreal is it for you? Like you get behind the wheel at a track like Talladega and Daytona and you're like, you, do you kind of, you kind of sit back and you're like, damn, I'm like I'm racing, I'm racing at Daytona and Talladega right now. Like this is, this is surreal. Yeah. For me, it's, you know, it has become, I'd say, you know, it's surreal like Daytona for the test. Like I think I really felt it more for the Daytona test when I was there. Like, holy cow, I'm at Daytona for the first yeah. time being in a race car. And that was my main thing um, for the race. I would say it actually, 
it actually really wasn't that surreal. Um, I think that was more because I felt, I felt prepared for it. And, yeah. you know, I did so many laps on this sim, and it just felt, I guess, you know, I want to say, it don't, I don't want to sound arrogant saying it felt normal to me, but it was like, Oh, it that, you know, just, I just got in the zone and I just was able to focus and yeah. get on the, get on the racetrack. And it, it really didn't seem too much different than a normal race per se. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Once once you get in that racer zone, it feels a little bit different. And then one, one more thing on, on the track topic, I, I just kind of looking at the schedule here. You went you went to Indianapolis Raceway Park a few weeks ago, and that's something we talked about here on this show. I talked with uh, Mamba Smith about it. He, ma- he made his debut there. Uh, we we're talking to Billy Venturini about it, and they were just saying how cool of a weekend it was uh, now that Arca was back at RP. But not only that, but the truck series. I thought that was really cool. How, how did you kind of soak in the weekend? Is that a place that you kind of have on – on your top list of tracks so far this year? Like, was it a fun weekend? It was a pretty, well, I'd say stressful weekend because we had, um, what actually was um, like Pocono. So after my Pocono wreck, I had been diagnosed with a concussion. Yeah. So um, I basically, we were trying to get myself medically cleared to race. And I ended up being medically cleared to race at IRP and the Pocono car. We were going to take it the same car to IRP and, the car was completely trashed. Um, yeah. We don't know if it's totaled quite yet because we haven't had time to look at it fully, but it's probably probably totaled. Um, so we bought, Wayne bought a new car, well, a new old car that he, he bought back an old car from, I think it was, yeah, Dave Richmond. And we got the car a day before the race, uh, two days before the race actually. And so whatever, whatever setup that was on it left, what, the last race that car ran was whatever we ran at IRP. So um, for us, it was a little bit stressful going in. But once we got in it and I got on the racetrack, it was pretty fun. But I would say for me, it was quite a bit different from late models when I raced there in, in a late model was that yeah. the high line was not the dominant groove. Like in late models, especially in sportsmen, it was everyone would be on the high side versus the ARCA race. And it was actually better for ARCA and trucks um, in the racing product, in my opinion, was that you could run the low line, you could run the middle, or you could run the high line. And it really made, I felt, for a really good race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there were so, there were so many lanes, and I hadn't really watched too many races at IRP in the past. But it was really cool to see you guys run up. You could run top, run the bottom, and the battles where like if you you went to the inside, you had to pull like like a sl- little slide job action on them. Did you did you ever have to do that in the race? Yeah, actually a little bit. Like you know, we us starting from the back, and for us it was it was we had the O one and the ten of fast track that that we had to pass, and then. Me and Brad Smith went back and forth quite a bit. I'm trying to trying to remember, like, we had several times. We were a bit back and forth. I caught Brad, passed him, and then so we were – it was, I'd say, really tough to hold off, you know, Brad for a while with what we had. And it was just me driving really offensive but also a defensive race. And I felt like I learned something from that too was that, you know, racing Brad and – I had to give props to Brad too, because Brad Smith is a really good race car driver and he doesn't get a lot of credit for it, but he will always, he won't cut you off. He'll always race you clean and you can race fairly hard with Brad Smith and he, but he races you clean. And that's why I like, I had a lot of fun racing Brad Smith and IRP and, you know, it made for a good, it made for a good entertaining battle. I don't know if we got any TV time for it or not, but it was like, Hey, this, it was a pretty fun battle to learn and also get some experience on IRP and how the, how the, um, mid race battles work too, for arc at a track like IRP. It, it made, it was something I could write down a lot in notes. I wrote like a whole page on my notebook that I keep in between races on just me racing Brad. So it was, it was something, and I learned a lot from it in short. Yeah, that's, 
Yeah, that's one thing. Like I, I went to the ARCA race at New Smyrna and that was the first ever short track race that I went to back in, in February and being mm-hmm. there at the track, getting to just kind of look around and you can see every single battle that's taken place, whether it's for second place or whether it's for 11th place. Like it's really cool to see the battles, you know, at the front and at the back. And I noticed that, you know, in like in an Xfinity series two and trucks and stuff like that, you'll see some amazing battles for 15th 20th place those guys you know in the mid pack don't have as much funding but you're you know you're still fighting for for every position that you can but those guys usually are the guys that have so much respect for each other and that's why guys like you and brad smith can go back there and put on great battles and i wish i wish they were put on tv more because i wish more people could see them because those are some sometimes the best battles on the racetrack when you got guys just clawing um for 15th but clawing in a very clean way because you guys have have a lot of respect for each other that's really cool i agree because that's that's my main thing that's why why i really have liked about arca is that you have a lot people in general in arca you know it, they have a lot more respect compared to late models where there's, yeah. you know, you won't have people just straight up. Generally, you won't have people straight up crash you just because you're in the way. And ARCA, it's a lot, there's a lot more people with, you know, in, in the same boat as someone like me that, you know, there's quite a few people like Alex Club or Brad. They wreck their car. They know they got to fix it. So there's a lot of respectable racing there. And, I really wish it would help get on TV more, you know, um, obviously I'm biased because it would probably help me, but it, I feel like, you know, watching back races too, because, you know, when you just have, have the leader in the shot for 20 laps, but then those 20 laps, people are battling for 15, you know, it, it misses out on the TV action a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing I don't get sometimes, you know, TV's covering, covering the leader for 15 mm-hmm. laps running by himself, but man, there's some, some good action going back in their field, but I will prop TV. Sometimes they, they are, um, you know, they are getting better at, you know, having a knowledge of the field as well. There are the guys up there like Phil Parsons, uh, especially I think is really cr- um, critical in the, in the ARCA booth. He, he knows a lot about the field, uh, the sponsors. I think, I don't, you know, obviously you're at, you know, more races than me in the garage area, but I think he's, he's down there a lot when they, when he does get sent to the races, I know at Daytona, when I was walking the Arca garage, he was down there with me talking to, to the teams, uh, walking around, trying to get to know people. Cause I was like his, um, his only his second season covering Arca. So TV is, is really a crucial, crucial thing for the Arca series. And I know when they're on Mav TV and flow racing, they get coverage as well, but I really, that that's one thing when, when I got put on Arca to cover this year, kind of like I told you, I, I try to find, I'm trying to find as many stories as I can and put them, you know, out to, to the public. Uh, so people can hear about, about teams, teams like Wayne Peterson's and drivers like Zachary Tinkle, um, you know, so, so they know uh, the, the stories when they watch the races. So, so it's really cool to see. And I'm glad that, um, you know, you're back there ha- having some fun with, with the drivers around, uh, you know, you noted uh, Alex club as well, his team. Uh, I know those guys uh, fight and claw uh, every week for finishes and stuff like that. So it's really cool. I love it. It's always good. Always good to see. Yep. I will say um, definitely like with Mav, you'll have quite a few people kind of answer on, you know, how much the TV reporters come down. Like um, Josh, Josh Sims, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank. Yes. He is in the pits for every race and he does a really good job. I really have a lot of respect for him. Um, and he does, you know, he does a really good job. Like I can, I've, whenever I've seen him, I can talk to him. Usually I I'll be honest. I'm a little more scared when going up to like the media because he got several people going up to him every single race. And, but they're, they're always, you know, they always take note. So I, I really do have a lot of respect for those people because I'd say, especially this year compared to last, there's definitely making a significantly more effort. Yeah, exactly. So definitely, significantly more effort. I, I love Josh Sims. Big shout out to Josh here on the show. He's a great guy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back with more here on Off the Record.
And welcome back here on Off the Record. Still here with my great guest, Zachary Tinkle. And I wanted to talk about another story that, that I talked with you about earlier in the season. So as you note, a lot of people um, in the Cup Series with this next-gen car, right, um, or even Xfinity trucks, guys wreck, and you're like, oh, you know, we, you know they got to fix that car up to use it later in the season. And as you kind of hinted at earlier in the show, you know, these smaller teams, when you wreck a car, sometimes you got to prepare that thing for the, for the next week. And, mm -hmm. and so, and in your case, uh, for your team, you got different drivers coming in the car and you're not always in the race car. Um, and you're not always in a race car that you'll be racing the, the next week. So basically at Nashville fairgrounds, what happened, somebody got an incident, uh, in qualifying, I believe it was, uh, tears a, you know, race car gets torn up and you're sitting there like, man, I, that's the car that you're going to be racing the next week. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it was the next week at Kansas. And I remember you, um, people were asking me about it too. Uh, Cause there's a lot of people that love uh, the Wayne Peterson team. And there were, there were people, there were people messaging me like, Hey, you know, I know you cover our guy. I know Wayne Peterson got a wreck. I think Zachary Tinkle's supposed to race that car next week. Can you, can you check in with them? See what's happened? I was like, sure. I was like, I didn't, I hadn't even known yet that there was a wreck in qualifying. Cause obviously that stuff isn't like televised and the ARCA mm -hmm. wasn't really like tweeting about it. I had just seen one person. I was like, Oh man, that car is wadded up. And so basically, um, you know, your the, the chances for Kansas looks really slim and somehow, some way you guys scraped and clawed and, and the team got that car ready for you at Kansas. And like we had noted earlier in the show, I, I just remembered 11th place finish at Kansas after all of that. I think that's what was even cooler about it, but kind of just summarize what that week was like, just mentally for you just to be like, well, damn, it's a week until I got to step in the car for Kansas. And that's what my car looks like. Yeah, it was something else. And, you know, we, we had the, you know, we had the, with the other driver wrecked the car at Nashville. And, um, and, you know, we were like, um, what does this mean for us? So we ended up, you know, in just three days time and, you know, Wayne, Nate and the team um, really crunched on the car. So we actually took our plate track car that we ran Daytona and Talladega with. So the body's all hung the wrong way and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, we're going to Kansas with this. We have no idea how it's going to run. And if it runs well, it runs well. If not, oh, well, it's, it is what it is. And we unloaded and we actually, you know, we get in three days and I think we qualified 12th place. And that positively surprised us because we, I think we have qualified one of the Venerini cars in that race. And so. it was like, wow. That was that was really good. I felt like I felt like that was my best qualifying performance of the season thus far. And then in the race, we we started the race, and then someone missed a gear on the start, and I get through the gears. I had like losing a place I got into, and then lap lap four there was a caution, like four or five, I believe, is an early caution. And I remember the shift down, trying to shift down, and I can't. I'm, I'm pushing on the pushing on the gear lever, and like, oh no, I'm stuck in fourth gear. <laughs> and so, um, you know, like, how are we going to pit when we're going to be stuck in fourth gear the whole race? And we didn't know if the car would make it, and somehow we just survived, and we got we got eleventh place, and it was like, wow, you know, it ended up being a really good result, and it was like. That was something that was an adventure but it was it was stressful in some ways but for other ways it was like no matter what we kept through it and I think that was something great about our team was no matter what got thrown at us we kept on the goal we kept on track and we stayed focused and we got a really good result out of it. Yeah. And for guys like you that are kind of in the mid pack, I know that was the race where, you know, you're just circling around, you're making laps, especially in the situation you guys were in bringing a play car, you're stuck in fourth gear, all these, all these big obstacles being thrown at you. And I know towards the end of the race, the, where, where the two leaders, I think Drew Dollar and Corey Heim, I think it was when they wrecked, like, mm -hmm. are, are they on the radio telling you that like, Hey, leaders just wrecked each other. That's a few spots right there. I actually saw it. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I actually that was, that saw was right it after a restart, wasn't it? Yeah, it was my after race. I was like, oh, I saw them going side by side. And then I think they hit in like three and four. And then my spotter was like, said in three and four, these guys might wreck each other. Keep on your toes. And sure enough, coming off turn four, they, 
may wreck, <laughs> which props to Wayne because he has a really good insight. The Wayne, my spotter, you know, he's, you know, I will brag on him because he's won in the 500 twice. So he's, you know, he's got a, he's got a foresight for that kind of stuff. And, you know, he called it and I was able to avoid it. You know, it, I, I was a significant way back. So it would have, and it's like, wow, that, that happened. So it was, it was something, <laughs> something there. Yeah, that was, I, I, I could see it from the TV. I was like, those two guys are racing each other hard. And yeah, they're Toyota teammates, but I was like, they're going to wreck each other, aren't they? They're going to do it right mm-hmm. here. <laughs> they took each other out. And they, that's, you do got to give props to, I'm um, sorry, you got to give props to Billy Venerini, though, for that interview, though. <laughs> We had, I know that's the, we talked to him last week, literally on, the, on this exact show just a week ago. And um, we didn't, we didn't ask him about that. I guess we forgot to, but we should have, but yeah, that interview, that interview was sure a classic. And those, those are the things that got I think uh, for our website, that was like the most, like, or at least the second most viewed like ARCA thing ever. Like all we did was just mm-hmm. post the quote of Billy Venturini and, and they just ate it up. Cause I mean, it was, that's a quote that's going to, it's going to go down in history in arca history as something mm-hmm. uh, right on tv and they gave him the mic and he just he let him have it he he wasn't going to filter what he was going to say so that was that was sure a, an, an insane race with so many storylines whether it was the leaders wrecking each other or you guys bringing a plate car stuck in i guess if you're going to be stuck in a gear uh fourth gear is probably the most ideal gear to be mm-hmm. stuck in yes um, so, you know, better than, than third or second for sure. And I think one thing that you had, you had mentioned to me before that week was, um, you, you know, you mentioned how everybody who's in your spot in the Arca series, everybody has so much respect for each other. Um, and I think you had mentioned there was a, there was a time where, where the Willie Mullins team was, was possibly trying, was t- trying to help you guys out this week, like lending a car over. Yeah, I have to, yeah. Willie Mullins and his team, they had reached out and they had offered, us to use their k and car and you know basically for kansas if we couldn't use our own car and that was my main thing and we would have had a, they had a the it was it was a really nice offer and so um you know they reached out there are several alex club he also reached out and offered you know any way he could help he, he couldn't lend us the car but any way he could help us you know fix the car he offered to and yeah. It was really great in that we had several several people reach out, and I do got to say it, that's one thing I really like about Arc is that it's it's one big racing family in that regard, and that is something you I really got to give props to those, especially Willie Mullins and Alex Club, and give a shout out to them because they you know they they reach out and really help, tried to help us out. Yeah, and those are the people in the series that know exactly what uh, you as a driver and the guys as a team that you guys have are, are going through, and they understand. And so they know just as the same way if they have an issue, people from your team are going to be able to help them. Uh, so they know, you know, if you guys have an issue, they're, they're going to help you guys. So I think that's really – I think, you know, just like you had said, that the ARCA family in general, and that's, I, that's what I've enjoyed learning as well, learning about teams, um, you know, kind of in your area. Because I knew, you know, obviously as a guy that just kind of didn't cover ARCA, but I watched it as a series. I, I knew with who the teams were. I knew, you know, some of the drivers, but I didn't know, know them. You know, now I've gotten uh, to know people in teams like you guys, uh, and it's been really cool uh, to see, you know, the, the ARCA family. It's like one, one, thing, one, one thing come together, and it's really cool uh, to see and especially in that, you know, middle pack of the field, you know, cause kind of the, the Xfinity series was almost the same way a few years ago. I don't know if you remember, there was like, I know me and my, my old podcast buddy, Tommy Joe Martins were talking about it. Um, there was a race at Kansas where um, I think it was somebody, somebody wrecked. It was back in the day in 2020 when they were doing the double headers, like they do a race mm-hmm. on Saturday night and then another race Sunday morning. Um, somebody, I think it was one of the, uh, DGM cars like crashed uh, on Saturday night and they needed to get the car ready for Sunday morning. And they were like, well, we have no way to do it ourselves. And I think there were like four different teams, like JD Martins, Motorsports, um, Mike Harmon racing, and a few other teams all came together and like supply, mm-hmm. like, you know, here's a part from this team. Here's a part from this team crew guys coming over to help them work on it. And that was like one of my favorite stories from that year. Cause it was just a whole bunch of small teams coming together to help, you know, another small team uh, with an issue 
And they all know if they had the same issue, that team would turn around and help them too. So I think that's really cool. Those stories like that. I do like that. You know, you even see that, hear that like, uh, like Wayne Peterson. I remember like he has a lot of one of the people I've always had a lot of respect for. And I'd say a really big advocate of that was AJ Foyt. And I remember Donald Davidson telling stories about the Indy 500 when um, Janet Guthrie crashed, you know, her primary car and Foyt actually gave her his backup car for the Indy 500 for her to run in at Indianapolis. And that is something it, it's, it's a really, you know, it's really ingrained in, in the sport. And that is something I really like about the racing sport. And that's, you know, when you have that, it's, it's really great to have. Exactly. All, all one big family here in the, in the, in the mm -hmm. racing world. So we'll, we'll be back here to wrap it up uh, on off the record. We're here to wrap it up, wrap up this great episode we've had with Zachary Tinkle. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming on. And I have a question uh, that I like to do when I did, I host my old podcast, the driver's meeting with uh, my friend, Tommy Joe Martins, and he liked to end every show and he'd ask our guests that we'd have on, he asked them two questions. So the first one, was in about five and in, in, let's say five years where where would you want zachary tinkle to be as a race car driver as as a person anything in five years where where would you want zachary tinkle to be what what, what is i'd say in five years i could probably see myself hopefully in the xfinity series or maybe even the truck series and you know for me i kind of I'll be honest, I really haven't thought too much on it. And that is because yeah. I don't want to, you know, I kind of, I kind of try and live in the present, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh, yeah. And for me, I, it's, you know, for me, it's like if I get a good Xfinity ride where I can have a salary or something like that or sustain myself financially, I'd be happy to run the truck series or Xfinity series and make a career out of it. You know, not very many drivers have that opportunity. And, to be in that situation like be like a Justin Allgaier or Matt Crafton for example and for me if I got that opportunity I'd be very happy doing that but if I got the opportunity to run Xfinity hopefully by then I'm running Xfinity and hopefully in a really good car um and never say never um hopefully and maybe you know maybe six seven years from now maybe an opportunity comes for me to race in the cup series you never know Exactly. Never, you never know in this sport for sure. So we'll talk more about um, the things in the present here and kind of the, the near futures for the Arca series. I think we just surpassed the halfway point, I think, in the Arca series, which is crazy already. The years has kind of flown by. So for you, I know you won't be racing at Watkins Glen, but kind of as a driver, just to update, you know, the viewers, the fans, is this kind of like for you as a still like a week to week thing, you know, seeing when, when you'll be able to, to be in the car? Yes, yes, and yes, and no, in some certain regards. We kind of, our plan is to run the whole, you know, as many races as we could. And that was, the initial plan was full season, but some races, you know, it's not really worked out financially um, with, with teams. So for us, it's, it's still up in the air, admittedly. And right now, actually, our focus is shifting on for 2023 and, our goal for 2023 is we're probably going to see, see the rest of this year out, see how it goes. Um, nothing's real firm for the rest of the season. We're just going to take it one race at a time, but our, we're mainly focusing on 2023 for now. And that is um, where ho I'm hoping to line myself up with a deal for hopefully a more competitive ride probably would be, part time or the East series, maybe out West too. It just depends, but we're trying to aim for probably change up 23 where I can run a bit more competitively, but probably on a reduced schedule unless we got major sponsorship. So we're just trying to keep in the air and see how it goes. Um, you know, there's several teams I've, I've talked to about 23, but, um, I can't say any names, but it would be, you know, hopefully, I hope to have an announcement for 2022 real well. We will have an announcement for 2022, the rest of 2022 real soon. And then hopefully something really good for 2023 soon after that. 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. And you mentioned, you know, the sponsorship side as a driver. And I know, you know, I've talked to so many drivers about this and, you know, the, the, the stress and of going through trying to get sponsorship for race to race, trying to get funding because it's such, especially nowadays, it's such a crucial spot, uh, part of the sport. You know, how, how often are you, you know, you and just your team in general, just, you know, making calls, seeing, thinking about it, seeing anything you could do to try to get ju just, you know, a company, uh, another company on the race car that can help you out. Yeah. I and mean, we usually, we were, we do like a lot of cold calling and stuff like that. And I think it was to the point, I would say, I want to say about maybe 500 cold calls a week, a lot just for sponsors trying to trying to put something together we were you know we were able to get some sponsorship with indianapolis um with you know super clean and fast track physical therapy and so we got it we got sponsorship and of course we've had wayne has his own sponsors like great railing and uh, ocean pipe works have been with him for over 20 years and for us it's actually really helped me because then that's actually for me getting in a car for these costs because the sponsorships already sold on that car so it's it's really helped out a lot in that and we've had you know it's been it's tough and it's a very it is an excruciating tough job and but it's always a constant it's always constant to you know keep on it and keep working on sponsorship yeah exactly so so before we wrap up here i wanted to ask favorite favorite track that you've raced on uh, let's just say it could be ARCA, it could be late models, anything you've done. What What is the favorite or favorite few tracks that, that you've raced on in your career? Kansas, I would say. Kansas seems to like me, so I want to say Kansas. So um, I would say Kansas, my favorite track of, you know, the ones I've run at ARCA, that would be my favorite track that are on the ARCA schedule. I'd say my favorite one of, like, late models. I'm going to say, like, Anderson Speedway's my favorite track i'm hoping you know i would really like i've run anderson speedway every year of my career and hopefully i get an opportunity to get to again maybe at just one time in 2022 just to say i did it and because i want to keep that alive and i i really love anderson speedway but i really do like winchester as well winchester, winchester winchester is an old school style track i would have to say probably the most physical track I've raced on is Winchester. You're up on the wheel. You're getting bounced around quite literally in your seat sometimes. And you're, you're up on that wheel the whole, the whole time. And it's, it is some, it is not, it is not for the faint of, it's not for the lighthearted. So that most that. would be my three. I love that track. Yeah. Just on Winchester for a second. Like I always, I was talking with, uh, I think when I did a show with Corey Heim before he had mentioned mm -hmm. the, same, the same thing that you did saying that Winchester is like one of his favorite tracks. Cause he'll, he'll do the late models there. He'll do the Arca cars there. And I just think it's such a cool race. Right? I don't think they have it on I racing or else I would have bought it by now and, and ran it. Um, but I always say, you know, I have my tracks in mind where if, you know, once I get a little bit older and then maybe buy a, buy a junk car or something and go do like one race, just, just for the fun of it. Uh, that's, that's the type of track I would love to just drive on right there is Winchester. It's so cool. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, you know, not, it's not like Darlington, but it's like, a, it's like a small Darlington you know, kind of, it's just like the way it's, the way it's bumpy and old school and all that. It's so cool. I wanna, I wanna yeah. I, and the other thing too, like right in the cheap, car i'd say like a compact really good they run compacts out there in winchester and you're actually in a compact they produce some best breaks in there in compacts there in bristol where they it's it's literally like a plate race where you're flat out and they're they're racing two wide three wide sometimes four wide but yeah usually at winchester doesn't end well because winchester is pretty no, narrow no. but um it's it's uh they you know winchester is one of those tracks any type of car you can race on Winchester and it can produce a good show. Wow. That sounds like fun. I'm going to have to look into that. So, so then the mm -hmm. final question I want to say is tracks that you haven't raced on that are like on your bucket list that you really, that you really want to race on that you really like, what, what would those be? Well, you mentioned one of them and that's Darlington. Yep. Who, you know, who doesn't like Darlington? I don't know. I don't know a single race fan that I know that doesn't like Darlington. So and, you know, a race car driver hasn't like Darlington that's been on it. It's, it's a, it's old school. It's a driver's track. 
And, you know, that, that would be one on my bucket list of those I haven't raced on. The other one would be Spa Frank or Champs in Europe, because that's, you know, such a unique course, especially, you know, up the hill. We started the hill being our Rouge and then Ratty won as he climbed the hill. Fame, probably one of the, mo- the most, arguably the most famous corner of all of motorsports in Formula One. And probably the other track would be the, to race on would be the Indianapolis Motor Speedway because it's my home track in Speedway. And it would be so cool to race on the Indianapolis Oval. And if I ever got the opportunity to run the Indy 500 for it, I would take it in a heartbeat. Yeah, exactly. That's such a cool track, uh, Indianapolis mm-hmm. and Spa. Those are that good, good, good list of tracks right there for sure, man. So uh, it, was, it was great to hear that from you uh, and talk about Winchester too and talk about the Arca season. Obviously, wish nothing but the best for you and the team for the rest of the year. And hey, 2023, something's coming. Sweet. I can't yep. wait. Can't wait to hear Thank you. about it. So again, thanks to Zachary Tinkle for joining us today on Off the Record, and we will see you all next week.